I uh, am so excited for this race to get started, actually this whole season to get started. Uh, one of the main reasons is I don't know who's going to win today. For the last few years, it's kind of been a foregone conclusion who's going to win our class, and now there's some real suspense. Uh, moving into GT2 is uh, going to be a real boon to the fans uh, who get to see some real racing, real tight competition. And the, and the second reason I, I'm so excited is because the race car has moved so much closer to the street car. I don't know how many of you have been over to the Chevrolet display, but we have our rolling chassis over there. It's the full uh, uniframe, we call it, the body structure of the ZR1, also the Z06, the aluminum structure and all the chassis components, the power <coughs> components. If you strip off the outside panels of the race car, it looks very much like that rolling chassis, except with the uh, safety cage added to it. Uh, in fact, uh, there's so many more similarities uh, now that we're in GT2 compared to GT1. It starts right at the front of the car. If you look at the front splitter, the aerodynamic aid uh, at the front of the fascia, it's exactly the same. It uh, looks exactly the same as what you see on the carbon outside, exactly the same as the <coughs> Z06, or excuse me, as the ZR1. The whole rest of the body panels match virtually exactly the production surface. There's some wheel flares around the racing, the wider tires, and there's the big wing on the back, but other than that, it's absolutely the production car. Uh, in terms of the engine, I mean, we started the, uh, the GT2 off the ZR1, uh, but we're not allowed to use the LS9, supercharged engine, too good, too strong, too fast. Basically, it's prohibited. Uh, they made us take the supercharger off of it. So next suggestion was, well, why don't we do uh, LS7, the Z06 engine, with the ZR1 chassis, if that sounds familiar, that's what the carbon car is. But no, that's too good, too strong, too fast. So the race rules push us all the way down to the LS3, and that's the engine that's in the race car. It starts with a production LS3 block. It's engineered, the heads, everything about it is engineered by GM powertrain engineers. And in addition to that, the LS3, too strong, too good, too fast, we had to take the displacement down to 5.5 liters, otherwise we'd be too dominant out here. Now, I'm not complaining, the rules, the rule makers are correct. Uh, it would not be good racing if they let us run with our best stuff. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. The uh, Porsches, for example, they're, the basis for their car is the 911 GT3, you know, their special race version, and it's the RS version of that, so a special version of that special version. Uh, you know, totally track-oriented uh, car. They don't have to, it's almost like uh, if they ask Porsche, well, okay, you can run a 911, but you got to use a base Boxster engine and you got to take the displacement down 10%. That's essentially uh, what they've done to us. So there may be some carping as we go through the season about, oh, it's unfair, you know, Corvettes are too fast. Think about that as a, a disadvantage, the, the way we've uh, taken the powertrain down. Uh, and as I said, there's tons of other production parts on the car. I mean, the whole steering system is production. If you look at the rolling chassis over there, you'll see the steering column, the intermediate shaft, the steering gear. All that stuff goes straight into the race car, and uh, it's being validated out here under race conditions. It's the same stuff that you, you drive in your production car. So it's really exciting to see that stuff on the track. Um, I think we've talked before about uh, transfer back and forth. You know, the, the race car provides the street car with a lot of benefits. This is one of the ways that the street car provides the race car a lot of benefits. You've got really good, relatively inexpensive for a race car components that can stand up to uh, endurance racing out here. Another example we've talked about is the air conditioning system. A few years back, uh, the race regulator said, Wait, we will let you open the restrictor a little bit if you run air conditioning. It just makes sense. The drivers are in there. It's an extremely tough environment, very hot. They've got to concentrate for two hours at a stretch, sometimes more. Uh, and their lives depend on that concentration. So if you can make them a little more comfortable, they'll be faster and safer. So they said, you can put air conditioning in the car. The race team came to us, the production team, and said, you know, can you help us? We don't do air conditioning typically in race cars. So the production engineers engineered a system that went into the race car using production hardware, uh, and it's worked very well for years. This year, 
we actually have some kind of future car production hardware on the car. We have some extremely efficient hardware that's slated for future extremely high efficient vehicles like the uh, Chevy Bolt that's coming out uh, later this year. So we're actually kind of pre-validating some of that pr future production hardware in this race environment. So that's the way that the uh, Corvette race team is actually helping validate hardware for very high efficiency cars. So um, the last thing I'll say is that, you know, I mentioned the, the aluminum structure. If you go over there and you look at the race car, you'll see that exact same aluminum structure. You can see where it's been cut and welded to, to fit in the exhaust for clearance and where the safety cage uh, is uh, joined up to the aluminum frame. Uh, we tested that uh, pretty heavily the last lap, last race, last season at Laguna Seca. Uh, I was standing there by the side of the track uh, watching Jan battle a Porsche the last two laps. Uh, neither team really had anything to win. The championships were all decided at that point, but they were going at it tooth and nail, some of the most <laughs> exciting racing I've ever seen. And I'm sure you've all seen it on video as the Corvette was beating the Porsche in a drag race down the straight towards the finish line, the Porsche spun us into the wall uh, right after the race. The, the German driver said he started it, so I ended it, essentially admitting that he did it intentionally. Um, he may have think he ended it. He might have ended the fight, but he started a war. And so this season is going to be a war, and nothing focuses the race team more than statements like that. So. I'm looking forward to some really good competition. Yes, the rules restrict the cars so that they're extremely evenly matched. You saw that in qualifying yesterday. But when we get out there, we may not have the fastest lap, but we do have the best team. And at the end of the day, and at the end of the season, I expect to be winning. So keep, keep doing it. That means we're getting into the Hey, thanks. Yeah, I just want to talk about the Z06 carbon we, we unveiled yesterday for a lot of questions about it and people who aren't here but uh, the car outside is going to be a, it's a limited edition and just with Tab said it's about the technology transfer really with that car I wanted to create an experience with that car that people who love to drive people who like to go to track events people want something the closest to a C6R that's street legal it's basically that car but we're also uh, celebrating uh, 50 years since the first Corvette won its class in 1960 at the Le Mans 24 hour race. So uh, the Z06 Carbon Edition, we call it, it's a 2011 model. It'll be at dealers late this summer. It'll be available to order when the 2011 ordering starts in late April. And it's available in the, the new two new colors with the supersonic blue color that now we get to see outside in the sun and also a, a new Inferno orange color. And so it basically uh, tries to, we take the, the Z06, which is our lightest, best balanced Corvette model, you know, sort of the aluminum frame, and adds additional carbon fiber. All Z06s already have the carbon fiber fenders. We've got a lot of questions on that. All Z06s have had since they came out in 06, carbon fiber fenders and carbon fiber floors. And we've added to that a, a new carbon fiber hood, uh, and then uh, the, the carbon uh, ground effects that the ZR1 and the, G and the new uh, C6R GT are running with the splitter and the uh, rockers. And it has a real purposeful uh, track um, appearance with the black wheels, black mirrors, black headlamps. And later we gotta open the windows. You really gotta take, if you haven't got a chance to see it, get a chance to take a look at the interior. It's got suede, suede and leather interior. The first time we've done suede on the Corvette, again, taking the race connection, look at the race car, they have suede steering wheel and seat inserts. We have those on this car too, as well as uh, uh, armrests and center console. Like, like Tad was saying yesterday, we tried a lot of different things at suede at, in the design studio to see what we like. We ended up liking almost all of them, so we, we put them all in there. Another neat thing too, uh, the blue car, if you were the blue car, it has blue stitching. The interior is all stitched in blue get the orange car, it's all stitched in uh, orange. And there's some other uh, features in the car like uh, embossed seats and uh, special sill plates, the racing pedals.